This is Olena, and I'm Isaac. Our many adventures take us high and low, fast and slow, near and far. Subscribe to the Travel Bug Bite today! We are going to New London, Connecticut to the supercharger there. Uh, we're spending the day uh, in the area, and um, if I open up this map here, it gives me all the superchargers. And um, the one closest to us is in East Greenwich, Rhode Island, but we don't want to go there. We're going to go to this one in, uh, oh, that's Mansfield, Massachusetts. Map Connecticut is, is south. <laughs> Connecticut is south, but the map is upside down. As so, the Ukrainian explains get, to the American. Let's get oriented here. There we go. All righty. So the closest one, there's only one in Rhode Island. Um, and the closest one outside of Rhode Island, you got one in Mansfield, Connecticut. Um, I think this is... Uh, New, uh, not sure where that is, um, near Plainfield in Norwich. And then we got one in New London. The number means how many uh, spots are available. So that means there's five supercharger spots there. So we're navigating there. And a cool thing that it does when, um, especially in the winter, is uh, this bar up here uh, means I'm using battery. And when I hit the brakes, it turns green. And that means it's uh, generating battery. But if there's a dotted line here, it means the battery is too cold to be able to do that or it's too full. Um, so uh, what it does right now is you can see right here, it says preconditioning battery for super for fast charging. That means it's using extra battery actually to heat up the battery to make it so that the charging will be better because it'll charge a lot faster if this line is solid. So it's heating up the battery right now because it's, it's 40 degrees out, it's not that bad. But um, on a really cold day, these dotted lines would go all the way up and you'd get horrible mileage. So. A big question that I get is like, is is how do you how do you charge? What if you want to go farther away? But they're everywhere. Um, I don't know why it keeps on telling me only the local ones. Because um, it'll be the entire map. Oh, it's yeah, it's. I don't know, but anyway. There's more than confusing. that. Tell yeah, them about but, New York. Uh, what about New York? We had a Tesla in New York. Yeah, in New York City, it was kind of annoying. We lived in Brooklyn, and. Um, uh, there was only one at the time. There was one in the botanical garden parking lot in Brooklyn, and you had to uh, you had to actually pay per hour, like six dollars an hour, to even be in the parking lot. So that was annoying. Um, you can't really charge at home because if you're living in an apartment, then it doesn't really work. You can't stick a cord through the window. You could, but <laughs> yeah. um, if you live in a house, then p potentially or a brownstone that you own, you could like have an out outlet outside i guess that's possible i don't know what the laws are regarding having a cord going over the sidewalk probably not allowed to do that so in cities it is a little bit more annoying um but there are destination chargers as well i didn't mention that that once i chargers. yeah they're um they're what slower else? and they're not official tesla chargers so these are only superchargers but um if i click on let's see so right now it's only showing me the superchargers, but what if I wanted to know? I honestly don't know. Uh, let's see, char uh, charger. Yeah, it's not gonna work. No, it's not gonna work. This looks like yeah, a here we go. Oh, nope, it's right here. Destination charger. So, so um, these ones around here, like for example, there's one in Newport, Rhode Island. Um, if I was in Newport and I found myself So that's stuck. one of the chargers that's for hybrids. It, and well, for, for, for other, other electric cars as well. It, yeah. um, it, the superchargers at Tesla will only work on Teslas. Uh, this is probably like a parking garage in Newport that, you have, again, you have to pay to go in. And those usually will get you like 35 or so miles per hour. Is that more than at home? That's about the same as if you have an RV charger at home. Um, but if you have a a better charger at home like my brother does uh you can get more like 40 or 50 even you mean like uh, we did uh no we didn't have as good a one as he did actually um you can get the official tesla one which is faster it's 500 dollars plus installation um but yeah when you're charging just on a normal outlet at home it's three miles an hour that's what we're dealing with right now since we moved so you're only getting like 40 50 miles overnight so if you're driving anywhere except for to work you kind of got to go to a supercharger which is kind of annoying especially in the winter uh, but um, I was going to mention, 
I don't, know, I don't know. I found going back and forth to New York, it wasn't really inconvenient. You could stop at New London. You could stop at Milford, Connecticut. There's, oh, there's back our... and forth from New York. People don't know where oh, we live. Oh, sorry. We live in Rhode Island. So <laughs> it's about a four hour drive. Uh, and, uh, you know, you want to break anyway. You want to get, you know, maybe get some subway or something like that at those truck stops. And it's not that big a deal. And so. it would only be one stop on the way there and one on the way back. Yeah. Um, in fact, you can make it in one charge, especially if you have the long range model, but we don't. Um, the, the, so it, it, it gets you about, our car gets us about 200 miles realistic. It says it's rated at like 250, but um, that would be perfect conditions, like warm day, going exactly like 45 miles an hour um, with with no stopping. Like, yeah, so uh, um, but the point is that I was trying to make before is if you plug in an address and it doesn't tell you need to charge, then you don't need to charge and you can kind of really trust the navigation system. But then you have to think where you're going after that. Yeah, which is where at the end it says um, round trip estimate back to this starting point. And that would say zero. So if I wanted to go, I'm, I'm now navigating to this supercharger. But if I went to that supercharger and then didn't charge at all, I can't get back to where I am right now. So if you plug in like I'm going to work and look at that at the bottom, scroll down and it'll tell you whether you have enough to make it there and back. But if it says 2% or something, be careful because if it's a cold day, you, it's probably, you, you're probably still not going to be able to make it back even though it says that you will. It, didn't you like do it with 1% left once? Yeah, I got down to, I think I got down to six miles one time. Um, but like, look, if I go to, for example, this supercharger, which is closer to us, uh, if I wanted to drive, this is near like a shopping center. If I wanted to drive there and back, I'd still have 56% left on my battery uh, when I went home. So, yeah. Just always, like, I don't, I pretty much never drive without having an address in here, just so I know that for some reason, if something happened, it would be, or maybe the supercharger near me is broken, or who knows. Um, I always have it going just to make sure. Um, and so now we're headed to New London, and we'll see you there. So here we are at the supercharger in New London, Connecticut. This one's relatively new, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, so it says how many stalls are available, seven stalls available, uh, 250 kilowatt hours maximum. My car is 50, so I think we'll be all right. You're not allowed to do more than that in one setting, in one, you know, one go. Uh, charging fee is uh, 25 cents per kilowatt hour in Connecticut, uh, where we are now, they charge per kilowatt hour. In Rhode Island, they charge per minute using the machine because it's illegal to sell electricity, uh, to resell electricity. So um, it's actually, I think, it depends. In Rhode Island, it's cheaper. I'll explain in a second. But basically, here's my battery. I got 54 miles left. I can set the limit. I'll put it to where the trip is. Why? Um, because you're, you're not supposed to charge it all the way. It's bad for the battery. You save and, with your phone. Yep. And um, it won't do that regenerative braking if you're at 100%. Uh, so, yeah, you're going to see in a second. I'm going to plug it in. And um, you'll see the. Uh, it's going to start really, really slow. And then it's going to start going really, really fast. And we'll show the plug-in and unplugging at the end of this video. Mm. Whoa. So um, at the charger near us in uh, East Greenwich, I'm pretty sure it, this only goes to 300 miles per hour. It only goes to around, uh, I think it can go up to 100 kilowatt hours. So it might go up to like 450. These, this is a new charger. Um, 111 kilowatts is really, really, really fast. Uh, it might even go, it's going higher still. Um, oh. yeah. All right. 116. The new ones apparently can do like 150, I think, uh, the really new ones, but you also have to have a car for it. This version of this model three can't go any faster. It's not even supposed to go faster than hundred, but we're at 112 right now. Um, because the battery just can't handle that kind of load. So we've already charged five miles so far at home on a normal charger. That would take an hour and a half. Um, and it's going to start slowing down. It's already gone down to 475. The higher you get, uh, the, the, the more you've charged. And the reason they do that is um, so that people will 
charge their cars when they're lower because when you charge it when it's higher it's bad for the battery so it's tesla's way of kind of being encouraging you to charge it when it's at like when you're at like 50 miles instead of just you know i'm pretty leaving. sure my iphone does the same thing it's yeah so it, it slows down as it gets higher if i set it all the way to max it's telling me that it's going to take 50 minutes to charge completely so if i put this uh set limit all the way to the end to 100 percent, it says it's going to take about 50 minutes and that's taking into account the fact that it's going to slow down because if it was 400 122 miles an hour i this is only going to go up to 250 so if you did the math to 200 miles should only be a half an hour not 50 minutes but since it's going to slow down it's it's telling me the real amount of time that it's going to take but the recommended amount of time uh, sorry the recommended level i think it's like 85 percent or 90 percent uh only a half an hour and um even if I had had less battery than the 50 miles that I had, if it had been like 20, the difference wouldn't be that big because it just goes so fast when your battery is low. So um, if you have a Tesla or you're thinking about getting one, yeah, always try to charge when it's lower. You want to keep it between 20 and 80 percent basically at all times, which is true for any lithium battery. So uh, what are we, what, what do people normally do while they're charging? Um, let's see. So... This used to be free. So let's see here. You open this little menu here, uh, this this little arrow here, and um, you can go to the Internet. Uh, you can do entertainment and you can play games. There's solitaire. There's cat quest. I've never played that. What about the racing game? I love the beach buggy racing. That's one of my favorites. OK. It's, oh, warning. Warning. Don't use anything. <laughs> Yeah, and the wheels yeah. actually move while you're driving. So you look like a psychopath when you're parked and, <laughs> and turning the, the your brake, wheels. The brake lights go on when you press the um, when you press the brake, but you're not supposed to press the accelerator. But I don't think it actually does anything, even if you do. Um, here we go. Yeah, that's dirty. <laughs> so let's see. It's, it's a bit like, I don't know, like Mario Kart. One complaint I really have, two player, I don't know how that works. Uh, one complaint I really have is you can't control the volume of the music. So it's, in my opinion, a little loud. Let's be this dude. Um, I always keep it on chill, otherwise it's crazy. Um, and let's play, oh, I haven't even unlocked any, everything. Chill. How Here often you do you play this? Every once in a while. So it's like Mario Kart. There's items and stuff. So here we go. Three, two, one. And yeah. So I'm actually moving. Oh my God. It feels really weird because yep. I'm looking at this and we're not actually moving. Wait, let me show them on the outside. I'm transparent or something. The items in this game confuse me. Anyway. Like some kind of rocket now. What else can we do? I'm bored of this. Oh, but I want to win the race. No. I'm already halfway through the first lap. Holy moly. Oh. Okay, fine. Whoa. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, there's all these games. Chess. Wow. There's, they Chess? Keep add, they keep adding new games. Um, and then theater. Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, but you need to pay a $10 a month uh, subscription to Tesla Premium now. But I thought we could still tether. You can tether your phone to Wi-Fi. It but, doesn't work very um, well. It doesn't go very fast. So right here, you can, you can, so there's... It was free for how long, though? It was free for maybe even like a year. Um, and then they got rid of it. Same with Spotify. All these, uh, um, it can automatically connect to Spotify, to... Um, uh let's see tune in radio there's karaoke oh yeah karaoke does that work for free i don't think i don't think so nope you need premium connectivity um so you can explain karaoke though karaoke is exactly what it sounds like it tells you the it has the text on the screen and you can sing uh, and you can do it while driving you can but it, there's a warning that says don't read the screen only do this with song it's meant for your passengers if you want to sing along make sure it's a song that you know <laughs> Okay, how about you make me fart? Oh. 
gosh. Because Isaac farts a lot, and this is his revenge. <clears throat> so it used to be, you used to have to tap a bunch of things to get to Easter eggs, but now it's in a button to, that just says toy box. Emissions! <laughs> Emissions! That's um, rude. So I can put wherever I want the whoopee cushion to go. It, so you can have it be either a random one, a short ripper, a falcon heavy, ludicrous fart, neuro stink, or a boring fart. Uh. And you can have it so it does it every time there's a turn signal. So if there's somebody in your car who doesn't know about it, it'll happen at completely random times. And then on demand is when I press this this button. Tell us about Pablo's reaction. Well, Pablo got so confused. Our dog. Who's Pablo? Yeah. Yeah. Dog, he just like he just looked around like, "What the f was that?" He looked um, under his butt and he's like, "I didn't do that." But anyway, yeah. So that's pretty fun. There's tracks, which is a uh, which is a um, piano keyboard. Piano. Thing. Yeah. You can tell me about this. Really? You don't know a lot of the things that this uh, this baby can do. And meanwhile, we're already at 95 miles. We started at 50. So there's plenty to do to... Oh, it's like GarageBand. You can, like, add stuff. Clear track. Oh, my God. That's kind of cool. Wait, get the piano back. <laughs> Beethoven and would be proud. All kinds of stuff like. What that. do you think Beethoven would think it. about people playing his music on a Tesla? I have no idea. We have romance mode. Yes. It's the flame that never goes out. Experience romance mode and stay parked all night long. Oh my! Easy. If it was That's... dark out, you'd see that the lights go dim Whoa. and it has a fire. You can't even see it through all the fingerprints on the screen. Oh, uh, gross. Anyway, um, sketch pad. Oh, are you going to draw a penis? Should I? No. Uh, <laughs> publish. Publish? No, no, we don't need to publish um, that art. This is in the toy box. Uh, Santa mode. We have that in a different video. You can um, draw We'll do on, rainbow mode at some Mars. point. Multiplanetary species. What? Yeah, you can drive on Mars. Yeah, but what's multiplanetary species? We are a multiplanetary species by driving on Mars. And this is the real, sur like, actual satellite footage of the surface of Mars. It's awesome. And I can switch and go Mars. I can go. Uh, no superchargers on Mars. That's dumb. What that is you, dumb. Yeah, what if you needed to get from one side to the other? Uh, and then Rainbow Road. Oh, God. Oh, no. I'm not doing it. <laughs> we'll do it another time. It upsets me. Yeah, it's really, really gets annoying after a while. Now we're down to 282. So we're about probably about halfway. Um, I have it set to miles. You can change it to set it to percentage. Um, but yeah, 280 now, which is still faster than any anything at all, uh, no matter what chargers. Superchargers are the only things that can go this fast. The fastest you can get at home is probably like 40 or so. Um, but, you know, who needs more than that at home? Because you, you do it overnight and you have a full car in the morning. Uh, and you pay for it in the electricity bill. Yeah, exactly. It's not um, free charging at home. One more thing to mention about the charge is, so obviously I have like a credit card attached to this. Um, it doesn't charge me until afterwards because I've had times where for some reason there was a problem with my credit card, but it still let me charge. And then I just owe them money essentially. Um, and an hour, uh, sorry, a dollar a minute idle fees. That's a big deal because th this was genius of them because I guess they decided, they realized, well, people are just going to go in here and go to the movies and come back like six hours later, um, you know, with, to a fully charged car, or even like walk home two blocks away if they happen to live near one. Um, so they actually have it. So once you get to your desired, you know, amount, whether it's full, whether it's 90%, um, it charges you a dollar for every single minute. So if you leave it for an hour, that's $60 that you're paying just for parking it uh, and putting it there for an hour. And don't be that guy who takes it out and, and plugs it in and leaves your thing there. And don't be the guy who parks in, in a Tesla space. If you don't have a Tesla, it's called icing. Um, icing Tesla users. Uh, people do it all the time just because, you know, there's a stigma against Teslas and they just park. They'll park like in three of the spaces so you can't charge. But alarm every two minutes. Hey, look, there's a, a we have a twin next to us. <laughs> uh, you should mention, um, do we? How often do you see all of the spots filled? Um, yeah, I've never 
gotten to a supercharger that I didn't have an open space except for the one in Milford, Connecticut that only has two. And one of them was broken and the other one was being used. That's the only time where I actually had to wait until that person was done. And what happens if there's people parked next to you? If there's people parked next to you, um, sometimes they're shared on one circuit. My sister's calling me. Uh, and you, out, you only each get half and half, but that doesn't happen that often. Hello? Hey. Hey. So you take it just off of here. There's a button right here. And if you press it, it automatically opens the charging port. Whoa, magic. Yeah. And there you go. Ready to roll. And, and then, then? When you undo it, you can't just yank it out. You have to press the button. And then you put it back in. It's magnetic. It's and mag that closes. Yep. And that'll close automatically. You can close it yourself. Oh. Yep. There well, we go. Well, what happens if you forget that you're charging and try to drive? Um, it will yell at you and it won't let you. <laughs> I do it almost every day. I forget to unplug it. Bye.